You're listening to the Tech Bytes podcast from the Packet Pushers. Today, we're talking with Node4, a managed security service provider about deploying and operating Fortinet's secure SD-WAN for its customers. And as you may have guessed, Fortinet is our sponsor. Our guest from Node4 is Glenn Akesta. He is the lead network services architect. Glenn, welcome to the podcast. And can you start us off by telling us why Node4 partnered with Fortinet for SD-WAN? Hi there. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, definitely. So we we had a partnership with Fortinet already previous to SD-WAN. Uh, that initially started with the next generation firewall, the FortiGate. Mm-hmm. Um, we built a multi-tenanted platform off the back of that. So it was a multi-tenant FortiGate with many individual virtual instances on there. And we evaluated the market for SD-WAN and just found that the, you know, the feature set and the cost performance of the SD-WAN from Fortinet uh, just seemed strides ahead. And the security integration as well was a really critical point for us. Okay, so already a f- partnering with Fortinet, so you thought, let's evaluate their SD-WAN. It looks like a fit, and that security integration makes sense for your customers, obviously. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay, so what then, uh, for you as a managed security service provider, what kind of value are you getting from Fortinet? For us, it was definitely the you know the combination of the security capabilities. Um, you know, their SD-WAN was kind of integrated security in the core and that was a bit of a differentiator well a massive differentiator from the other uh, solutions that we looked at um, we already understood their products which was great for us operationally and technically uh, the integrations with other solutions as well um, meant that we could integrate it with our portfolio and our other services and the network capabilities built in with the advanced routing stack meant that we could use uh, you know, BGP and everything that we would have done before with with more legacy routers um, in a single appliance. So that was great. That's important for you because you're a service provider. You don't get paid on the number of boxes you ship. You're not like a, a reseller who ships boxes and selling a firewall and a router and, uh, you know, all these other tools is actually good for business. Greater profit, single deal, you know, more revenue, kill the customer and all that sort of stuff. What you're actually selling <laughs> here is a service a deal and if you can do more with less then you you make more profit yeah absolutely we're trying to consolidate and we're trying to sell in you know in the nicest way possible as many service towers as we can to that customer to deliver them a real end-to-end solution that delivers them value rather than just putting in point solutions and, mm. and trying to meet particular check boxes and i presume also from an operational perspective having fewer consoles that you're trying to switch from to do things for your customers probably also makes a difference yeah, definitely. The operational aspects and, and the technical upskilling required if you have many different vendors um, would have been quite prohibitive for us. So yeah, hmm. absolutely. The cost savings and the operational savings. It's important from the perspective of resellers offering professional services as part of their portfolio or a managed service to not have too many vendors so that you can build up a focus in uh, the operational side, that is managing the day-to-day, a focus for deployment, but also a focus for sales so that the sales team doesn't have to keep finding all the new products and everything like that. So focusing down on one vendor partner with a box or a, or a service that's wrapped up inside a single thing is actually generally good for business, for resellers and, and professional services organizations. Yeah, we build up the expertise. We also work shoulder to shoulder with Fortinet. We've got a great relationship with the team there as a result of our you know, single approach to, to partner with them to deliver these services. I also want to touch very briefly on something you mentioned earlier, that there's a full BGP routing stack within the appliance that you're using that's also doing firewalling and SD-WAN. So you've got additional capabilities on hand if a customer or you have some special requirement that's going to require a little bit of extra routing. Yeah, we have, you know, one of the great features of the Fortinet SD-WAN is that you can change the route map applied to BGP uh, based on some of the SD-WAN health checks. So we, we utilize that fully so that we can influence the routing back into the site as well as on the way out because the SD-1 does a great job of load balancing on the available connectivity. Mm-hmm. But if we advertise the routes we want to receive back in on that connection using the route maps, then that's that's great for us. It makes it symmetric. Mm. Did you find that a problem? Like a lot of people would go, oh, I, can't, I have to have my, you know, Coca-Cola BGP, you know, my brand name of BGP uh, from my preferred router vendor. Did you find that an, an apocalyptic experience or was it just like, eh? It was just a case of, of testing it and make sure that all the, the features that, you know, we expected to be in there worked in the way that they always have before. And we found that that was absolutely the case. Now, one other part about uh, the Fortinet thing is this centralized management console that you get for the SD-WAN. 
and also for the security function. So you end up with this cloud managed. Is that something that's relevant to you delivering services to your clients? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it comes back to the, the multiple services. We have enhanced the SD-WAN with the SD branch extending into LAN and Wi-Fi and, and network access control. And being able to manage that through one console makes things operationally great for us and also means that we can give our customers access so that they can, in some cases, bypass us to make changes directly, um, which is great for them and great for us. Mm. It must be a change because before you would have had Wi-Fi from this vendor in the in the branch and then you would have had campus switches and then you have the router and then somewhere you would have looped the traffic back. So bundling all this up is a bit of a transition, less vendors. It is, yeah. We don't have to worry about the interoperability and compatibility of different vendors and different products. So, yeah, it's, I'm it's just good. I'm just thinking of it more from a troubleshooting, from, from a couple of points. There's a troubleshooting one. You know, if you're trying to troubleshoot a connection from the Wi-Fi, you don't have to go to three different management platforms or CLI into three different boxes to get out a map of what's happening in the branch. Exactly that. And also the demarcation. Um, you know, I'm sure you've been in a service provider environment before. Yeah. When there's multiple providers involved, everyone's pointing fingers at each other. Yeah, and, yeah. And there's the wireless well. guy, there's the campus guy, <laughs> there's the router guy, and they're all going, hmm, well, I can't see you wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's blaming each other. <laughs> well, they're not blaming each other, but you know, nobody wants to go to go through the process of digging into the network only to discover it's DNS, right? And yeah, so everyone just points the finger at us because we deliver the lot and then we can't escape it. But that that's better for everyone involved in It's kind in a of lot better of that way because you've got a unified tool, you'll probably know anyway. So Yeah. So you mentioned you, you want to sell obviously towers of service to customers. So did you bring SD WAN to them or were they asking you for SD WAN? Uh, it was primarily customer led. In a lot of scenarios, we're customer led, um, but you know we we had engaged with vendors and we were evaluating the market because this is something we saw uh, as taking off. But when the customers started asking us for it, that really cemented that decision and made us move to action a lot quicker. And what were they asking you for? Like, what are they hoping to get out of SDWAN? Everyone's talking about moving to the cloud. I think there was a big shift to an, and a big hype around moving to public cloud, and that's maybe settled more around the hybrid model now. You know, that is supported by SD-WAN in a lot of ways. And as a part of that, introducing more internet access, you know, that leads on to having multiple connections at sites, sometimes of different types. And the SD-WAN, again, just, just complements that and the visibility and control from doing that as well. So getting to cloud there, you, are, are they like looking to access software as a service or was it more we want to build an application and say a GCP or an Azure or whatever and we need to uh, get our uh, end users there? It was a mix of the two, to be honest. There was, yeah, there was some building apps in, in the cloud, which we, which we sometimes help with and then um, software as a service adoption as well and being able to route those different applications um, over the right circuits at the right, in the right way. And was the cloud access issue that they didn't want to be lumping users back to some, you know, headquarters and then back out again? That they wanted more direct access, or what? What is it about cloud access that SD went solving for them? Yeah, exactly that. People want the efficiency of going directly out to the internet rather than bringing it back through a data center, through a pinch point, uh -huh. uh, to get out to the internet. Why pay? I mean, it's, it's just like why pay for all that? Why pay to send traffic to head office when you can <laughs> just not bother? It just seems like <laughs> we only used to do it because that was the only thing we could do. You know, we always built hub and spoke architectures, you know, star architectures, because that was all we could do. And most of our routing protocols were so stupid that anything more complicated than a star architecture pretty much was impossible. Yeah, and people like to do things in the way they've always done them, don't they? So it was a bit of yeah. a shift. <laughs> Yeah, I just like to highlight to people that, you know, the only reason we used to do it that way was because that was the only way we could do it. That's the, that's what worked. And now everything's changed. A lot of those things that we used to do, a lot of that logic is gone. I believe uh, you've got a customer story that you can share with us, you, somebody who's actually using this. Yeah, so we've got a great customer. It was our first customer that we delivered a solution to. I, I think I'm okay to name them. It's Stagecoach, um, so mm -hmm. a large UK bus operator. Yeah, we delivered an SD WAN for them. We, uh, you know, they were looking to move to a cloud first approach. So they ticked a lot of the boxes that, or had a lot of the challenges that SD WAN solves. And we were up against some pure play vendors as well. So we really had to sell the benefits of this solution and our expertise and um, Fortinet's technology to get us there. How many sites are we talking? Uh, it was 250 sites in total or thereabouts. Okay, so significant. Was there any particular product that you're running there? Like, for Stagecoach to choose you over, you know, any of the other competitors in this space, there would have been one thing that probably stuck out in the deal. Yeah, I mean, 
I think if I was going to call them out, I think it'd be two. So the the security capabilities of Fortinet is strides ahead of everyone else. They were looking at an SD WAN product and a security product delivered in the cloud, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. means they've then got to buy two expensive products, which leads on to the second point, which is the cost to performance is just outstanding compared to the alternatives we've seen. Yeah, this is where Fortinet's uh, custom hardware actually is extremely valuable because they actually have custom ASICs inside of the hardware devices at the edge that do make security and routing and packet forwarding and all those things actually high speed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's exactly what we found. Mm. And do you have a sense of sort of the before and after picture for them? Like w- what benefits they got out of this uh, SD-WAN adoption? Yeah, they're, they're really happy with the solution. We you know, have had comments all the way from the delivery where they were complimenting the zero touch and, and how easy and seamless that was for them deploying the equipment. Um, but they're also seeing you know, sort of 10 times performance over their previous network, cost savings through consolidation um, Mm -hmm. and allowing them to introduce new applications and collaboration tools, which is even more important in the current kind of COVID climate. (laughs) So you had them installing hardware on site? Yeah, we were supporting the installation of the hardware remotely. So the customer was actually taking the boxes to site and plugging them in. And we were doing the zero touch provisioning from remote. Okay, so it was easy enough that you could just be on the phone with someone while they're plugging in a box and pushing some buttons and so on. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That's kind of cool, really, because that meant you probably didn't have to run around the countryside for months and months just to install <laughs> a box in a place, right? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I keep saying the same things, but it, it, it comes back to yeah, yeah. it's better for us and it's better for them. We're, we're saving time and, and they're getting you know their service delivered quicker, so... Yeah, that's all around for everyone. Yeah, but it's just a transition to like in the old days of routers, you would have had to handcraft a CLI config and bring the routers into head office and then put them in the back of the car and take them out to site and then hopefully the MPLS circuit was actually up. This is <laughs> is the internet circuit working before you go out, you know, just go out, plug this in, boom, up you're away, sort of thing. Yeah, no typoing of config CLIs and Things like that. We've had yeah. plenty of those nightmares in the past. Yeah, and you haven't got the wrong IP. The you know the service provider didn't give you the wrong IP address. It's just such a gap between the old and the new. And yeah. I believe you've also done SD WAN on your own internal network for Node Four, the company. We have, yeah. So we wanted to kind of live and breathe what we're selling to our customers, and that that shows the confidence that we've got in the solution that we're delivering, uh, both in terms of our expertise and the technology from Fortinet. So we're delivering the SD-WAN internally, along with the LAN Wi-Fi SD branch solution, um, network access control, and the remote VPN uh, security fabric client. Mm. So what kind of changes have you seen internally? Like, how are you measuring your own ROI? So we're seeing cost savings again through consolidation. So we're consolidating different services that might have had, um, you know, specific connectivity and solutions in place before. Uh, things like proxies can go away because we do that on the boxes now uh, mm-hmm. in a distributed way, which is great for performance. And automation as well. We're really taking advantage of the API integrations to make things quicker and more efficient. Mm. Can you drill down into that a little bit more? What, how are you using the APIs? Well, there's a lot of tools we use internally that were developed, and some of those are as simple and rudimentary as scraping license files received from Fortinet to get all of the SKUs and registration codes, mm-hmm. and then using a tool to automatically register those with Fortinet, but for the actual service delivery and maintenance part, we have developed software portals internally that will take information from our customer CMDB and inventories and derive the site configuration data from that to then build the zero touch provisioning models and templates. Hmm. So you can essentially go into a site having a sense of essentially what the architecture is and what you need to do there ahead of time. Yeah, we've provisioned the uh, hardware before it's even turned up on site. It's just a case of pushing that configuration to the device. Okay, and, and this is because you can touch. extract yeah. the and data so- via the APIs. Mm. Yeah, exactly that, all done through the APIs. It's pretty cool like how, how much of a gap that is from where we were just five years ago, how quickly that, that whole WAN thing has changed um, over the time. And as a service provider, it must be dramatically different internally. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a big shift. I mean, it it's great because it frees up people's times when, you know, previously they were, like you say, putting variables in configs and applying them to to legacy routers and yeah. that code kind updates. of thing. It's just, just, <laughs> just code like now updating software, yeah. yeah. You've got a router and now you are, and you had to update the, you know, the operating system and you'd be there for 
But 250 sites, that's four weeks' work, just updating the iOS. Yeah, but the shift is now that we've got development teams, we've got software uh, teams as well that you know doing work like coding and infrastructure as code yeah instead of that sort of task so the head so this is oh, that's interesting because so the headcount didn't reduce per se but they're actually doing more useful work which is a common story but yeah i think it's all about getting more output um instead of just repeating the same rudimentary tasks over and over again so glenn you mentioned uh, api integration what about did it have any impact on your sock because i m- imagine you must have a significant uh, infrastructure for running customer services yeah, so these boxes provide a lot of security services, and as a result, there's a lot of information that comes out of them that you need to analyze. So that that all gets fed into a, a SOC um, where you know they evaluate the threats that are detected and, and take action based on those. And a lot of that is using you know other Fortinet technologies in the security fabric and some of the automated kind of closed loop uh, functions available there as well. Yeah, that's got to be an issue for a SOC to close loop because you've got to, once a ticket opens, it still has to be closed out at the end of the day or whenever it gets resolved. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's really interesting to see the transition in SOC. SOC used to be this isolated ivory tower where nothing went in and nothing came out and the answer was always no. And the the transition or the inflection here is that these SOCs have to open up in the same way that networking has to open up and storage compute. But this transition is actually quite diverse, I think. And it's it's hard to imagine socks sharing their resources and integrating with the network like they have never done before. Everything works together when everyone pulls together, right? I think yeah. you know we <laughs> we want them to hold us to account and and we want them to advise us where you know things aren't done correctly or or uh, you know or threats are seen so we can action. Them. Mm. Well, if you want to find out more, you can go to Fortinet.com. You can also check out Node4 there at node4.co.uk. I thank you, Glenn, for joining us. And thanks to Fortinet for being a sponsor. You can find this and many more fine, free technical podcasts along with our community blog. That's at PacketPushers.net. You can follow us on Twitter at PacketPushers. Find us on LinkedIn, like us on Facebook, and rate us on Apple Podcasts. And last but not least, remember that too much networking would never be enough.